Do you want to know a little secret? I'm happy to share the secret with you. When they move you into a smart city, which is what they are building all around you, they are building what I would call a digital prison for you. And when I say they, I think we've established, quite frankly, who I mean when I say they are building a digital prison for you. The vehicles in which they are pushing, the autonomous driving vehicles, the quote unquote flying vehicles, each and everything that these people, these lizards are pushing is designed purposely to enslave you. Do not for one second think that what I'm saying is a lie. It is of the utmost importance that you understand this one simple fact that they are trying to enslave you. And that they started with the red light cameras on every corner, then they moved the crime cameras on every corner, simply slowly building out the infrastructure all around. 3G to 4G to 5G, which soon people will be having 6G. And when you combine the fact that everyone and their mama gets so excited when the newest iPhone comes out, the iPhone X9 2038ZP LG Dege Symbol T has came out. And I gotta go get it. We have been utterly destroyed when it comes to technology. What's the difference between last year's iPhone and this year's iPhone? A couple of more gigabytes of data? A better camera? Really? The average person don't use that damn camera for nothing but to snap photos of their family members and friends. But you spend $1,400 on a phone and you never once thought to yourself, hey, why is this damn phone $1,400? What is in this phone that cost me $1,400? Nope, 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 nope. You don't think about that. I just need to be a part of the in crowd. I need to be popular. I need to be cool. I, 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 I will be awesome if I have this phone. I submit this to you, ladies and gentlemen. Destruction waits on the other end of this. I mean, total and utter destruction waits on the other end of this. Those of you who get goosebumps thinking of completely transparent cities of the future, big data is far from being futuristic. Now, the man said big data is far from being futuristic, but then he shows you a camera that is looking at each person and pointing in a direction as to what where they're going. I, I think it's, it's really the lifeblood of cities today and uh, will be um, you know, the bricks and mortar that we use to construct cities in the future. This is Dr. Anthony Townsend. He's an expert on urban tech innovation. Cities without data, for him, unthinkable. We orchestrate our, our, our lives and our communities and our societies with algorithms um, and those algorithms. Nope, stop, pause, let's say this. We do not orchestrate our lives our cities and our communities with algorithms. That's not true. That is a lie from a little ugly lizard person that someone has highlighted and elevated to a point to where he has some form of credibility. Do you orchestrate your entire life around an algorithm? Is it? Do you orchestrate what you're gonna eat in the morning when it's gonna be eggs or bacon around an algorithm? Do you orchestrate the route that you're gonna take your kids to school? every morning around an algorithm do you need your gps to get your kids to school the gps in your car on your phone do you need a gps to get to your mama house you know where your damn mama house is you know where your kids damn school is what the hell is he talking about we see that we it don't include you and me it's him and his folk because if he can be the architect of the big data cities of the future and just get you to go along with it and guess who becomes a wealthy beyond his wildest dreams? He does. You see, this is how people have to call these dudes out. Operate on data that is sensed 
uh, through, through digital technologies. Anthony sees the city as an organism with a nervous system that collects signals to constantly learn and respond. The continuous addition of new technologies is immensely important for this. And you know what? Cities are living, breathing organisms. But it's human-based living, breathing organisms. And so what you see right now is revenge of the nerds. And I'm going to explain to you. I'm going to break it down for you. Imagine the scene. You're in a city that you grew up in. You went to high school there. You were a cheerleader or a football player. And you competed with the school across town, and they were your rival. And then you competed with the other school across town, and you, got, you were rivals with them as well. You took the bus home from school. You stopped by McDonald's to get lunch. You did all these human things. And that process of building out your life, you create a network, a human network of friends. You possibly are one or two people away from getting in contact with anybody you need to talk to. That's the human network. What these lizard bastards are doing is they're taking that exact same network, the human network, and replacing it with a digital network that they control, that they can control, excuse me. And so that human network that you would normally build out, you abandon it and rely on a digital network, and that's how you become the slave. Facebook was the start of it. Maybe MySpace was the start of it. But Facebook truly was the start of it, where you started to collect all the data of all your friends. Let me get online and, oh, I know this person. We went to high school together. I know this person. I know that person. Oh, look at old Billy. I, oh, oh, my God. Look, his wife has gained so much weight. She's so fat. Oh, my goodness. Man, I can't believe Chris went bald. Boy, that boy gray as hell. Look at his hair. Oh, my goodness. He done been through some rough things in life. So it's you are in this real 3D world walking around doing what you need to do and they open the doors to get you to come into the digital world inside that digital world they are the controllers they are the virtual gods as Urano Havari has told you and it's real simple I mean it's super simple limit your time in their world if everybody just say okay I'm not about to be running around in your digital world. I don't need a smartwatch that gives me my pulse. I can literally put my finger on my wrist and test my pulse. I don't need to know my temperature. I can put a thermometer in my mouth when I'm sick. Because the only time you really need to know your temperature is whether you feel sick or ill or not. I don't need this. I don't need my arm, the device on my arm tracking me, the device in my pocket tracking me, my car tracking me. Who benefits? It sure ain't you. And that's the point I'm making. So as these smart cities roll out all over the place, and I and I submit to you that you will see natural disasters where cities get hit and power grids go down so they can upgrade to smarter grids. Be mindful of these things. And then when you combine it with what you really see going on, where... Um, you truly see these things that are rolling out like this next scandemic that's coming out right now just in Colorado it just happened it just popped off state of emergency let me just go out here and whack all the food so you forced to come into the city and get food and while lizard the gates of hell is sitting there saying you're gonna eat lab grown meat which if that man says it's lab grown meat I promise you it's got human DNA in it cause he's wicked and evil when you start to see it from a 100,000 foot view, I mean, just take a second and just close your eyes and imagine that you've elevated above the problems of the day. In your office, you just elevated out of the office. Now you're above the office building. Now you're in the clouds and you're looking down and you can see little cars driving around. You can see buildings. You can see all these different things. And now you see from a 100,000 foot view the world that they want to create and build. It's a world that you can't go anywhere and you can't do anything without digital permission. And if you do decide to break the rule, you're going to get memory hold. It's a wrap for you, homie. It's a wrap. It means that our cities will be able to, to change 
more over time. They'll be able to fit better with our needs. Um, they'll be able to mesh better with the natural environment. He don't even believe the crap that he's saying. Look at his eyes. Look, look, look at his eyes. He don't believe what he's saying. Okay, and our city's going to be able to change. Hold on. So the building that I'm in right now, what is going to change clothes? Like Jay-Z, change clothes and go. What, the building going to get up and walk away? How the hell is the city going to change? No, it's a digital city. It's a digital network. It's that digital brain can change. But wait, wait. So nothing in the buildings changes. It's not like they're going the, the the highways and roads and bridges gonna get up and walk off and move into another direction. What the hell is he talking about? Keep listening. They'll be able to mesh better with the natural environment. Mesh with what natural environment? What natural environment? You mean the concrete that's outside? You mean the grass that was ripped up and plowed to the side and, and, and the rebar that was dropped down in the ground and the boards that was framed around and then the concrete that was poured in it to create this roadway? It's a bunch of bullshit. And um, they'll be uh, more comfortable to live in and more pleasant. But we're stuck in this weird period right now where we're doing all kinds of things with data. But we're stuck in this weird period right now where we're doing all kinds of things with data. Data that um, make people uncomfortable. That make people, yeah, because you a freaking weirdo. Look at and you. You look really like if I went in your closet, there's a dress. I'm sorry. In the male side of the closet, there's a dress. You look like it, brother. And it's always these little weak, wimpy looking dudes who you can tell don't have no scars on them because they've never been bust upside the head. They never played a football game, never played a basketball game, never played baseball, never went outside and jumped off of a swing while you were swinging back and forth and flew 15 feet in the air, landed on the ground, rolled and skinned their knees. They did nothing. Nothing. Look at them. That's who won't rule over you. People like this. You know, I've been having trouble recording. I'm not gonna lie to you. I've been having trouble recording between people not liking the videos. Eh, you know, again, hit the like button. But I've been having trouble recording this stuff because it's an insult to have to sit here and look at this. I mean, it really is. Knowing that if me and you were sitting around at the bar, one of y'all smoking a cigarette, the other one standing up there drinking a Dos Equis beer, as long as you're not drinking Bud Light, you're okay. I'm drinking no Budweiser products, we cool. And that man walked in the room, and you went to go shake his hand, and, and you spread your hand out real wide, and you made sure you, boom, and then you just ah, pulled them over to you, start shaking it hard. What's up, man, how you doing? He would piss his pants. But he's the one that's talking about how we need to build a future. By the way, this generation, um, 25, 30 to 35-year-olds, I've been at mixers with them, and they can't even stand the hard handshake. It's offensive to them. I mean, literally, the pressure, the amount of pressure that you give them in a the handshake it's offensive to him. Oh, you shook my hand real hard. Huh? And these are men. In fact, I submit to you, the women whose hand I've shaped, they have a firmer, more powerful grip than the men. Now, by the way, my handshake is like a vice grip. But I grew up in a time period where your handshake had to be a vice grip. I grew up in a time period where you shook a man's hand and you knew he was talking about you, you would literally yank him and bring him face to face with you, slap him on his arm like you were slapping him across his head and make him understand, hey, next time you got something to say to me, say it to my face. We ain't face to face right now. You didn't let his hand go. You didn't let him pull away. You dominated him and let him know, hey, this is me. 
You got something to say, you say it to my face. I'm done. I'm done. I'm supposed to be talking about smart cities. I'm supposed to be talking about damn smart cities. I'm not going to be able to do it.